in the previous lecture we have derived hamilton's equations of motion and this at the same time we have also uh, studied the physical significance of hamiltonian of a system now today we are going to discuss some of the important applications of hamilton's equations but before taking a particular example i would like to give a general instruction to solve dynamical problems using hamilton's equations so to apply hamilton's equations for solving dynamical problems you should follow the following steps basically we will follow four steps and what Uh, we will do in different steps let us see in first step we have to find the lagrangian of our system l for lagrangian and as you know l is defined as t minus b where t represents the kinetic energy of the system and b represents its potential energy so if we have to find lagrangian l of the system we must first of all calculate the kinetic energy and potential energy of the system and so finding the kinetic energy t and potential energy v we will first of all find the lagrangian l of our system now in second step when uh, we as we have find the lagrangian of our system so now we can find the conjugate momentum that is the momentum corresponding to the generalized coordinate we will now find in second step we know that generalized momenta are given as pk equal to del l by del qk dot you know qk dot is the generalized velocity so corresponding to a given generalized coordinate qk using this result pk equal to del l by del qk dot we find the generalized momentum and in the third step we find the hamiltonian of our system you know the basic definition of hamiltonian of our system is what h equal to summation over k pk qk dot minus l and when you will use this result to find the hamiltonian of the system you will see that the expression for hamiltonian will be in terms of the generalized coordinate qk and generalized velocity qk dot but to apply hamilton's equation we must have the expression of hamiltonian in terms of the generalized coordinate qk and generalized momentum pk in instead of generalized velocity qk dot so we must change this expression of h in terms of qk and pk and after changing the expression of h from uh, the basis qk and qk dot to the basis qk and pk we apply in fourth step the hamilton equations and you know what are hamilton equations these are qk dot equal to del h by del pk and pk dot is equal to minus del h by del qk so we write this equation and after writing this equation we will solve it and after the solution we get the desired result to clarify these concepts let us take a most important but very simple example that is the problem of one dimensional linear harmonic oscillator you have already studied this problem in lagrangian formulation here approach is different but result will be same you know whenever we talk about linear harmonic oscillator a picture of a spring mass system always comes in our mind but it does not mean that a linear harmonic oscillator means a spring mass system 
बट स्प्रिंग मास सिस्टम इज एन आइडियल एग्जाम्पल टू इलेट्रेट ए लीनियर हार्मोनिक ऑसलेटर सो फॉर कॉन्वेनियंस आई एम जस्ट टेकिंग ए स्प्रिंग मास सिस्टम सी द फिगर हेयर इज ए स्प्रिंग ऑफ स्प्रिंग कॉन्स्टेंट के विच इज मासलेस द स्प्रिंग इज मासलेस यू कैन से दिस इज एन आइडियल स्प्रिंग and one of the ends of this ideal spring is attached to a rigid wall rigid wall physically means a body of infinite mass and its another end is connected to a block of mass m and the block is placed on a smooth horizontal surface when this spring is unstressed then the system is in equilibrium and if the block is displaced from its equilibrium position the spring will be either elongated or compressed in figure i have just shown that the spring is elongated by x at any time t and this dotted line represents the displaced position of our mass m <coughs> and uh, now you can see the if the block will be released from this displaced position due to the spring force exerted on the block it performs a oscillation about its equilibrium position in fact our aim is to find the equation of motion of this oscill oscillation for this we will use here the hamiltonian concept we will so we will set up the hamilton's equations and then we will solve it so let us consider x is the displacement of our block from its equilibrium position at any time t and since the block is constant to move along this horizontal surface so its degree of freedom is 1 and only one generalized coordinate will be x to describe its motion so the kinetic energy of the mass m will be what this will be half m x dot square here x dot is what this is dx by dt and this dx by dt is velocity of the block that is of mass m and as the spring is massless so its kinetic energy is zero so you can see the the system has two parts first part is this block of mass m the second part is the spring and block has a kinetic energy half mx dot square at time t but the kinetic energy of a spring is zero due to its zero mass so the total kinetic energy of this system will be simply half mx dot square now as the spring is elongated by x so its potential energy will be half kx square now the block as you see here is uh, oscillating on this horizontal surface and since the surface is horizontal so the gravitational potential energy of this block will be constant we can take for convenience this constant value zero so we say that gravitational potential energy of mass m is zero and it may be taken zero uh, if we take the reference level to calculate the gravitational potential energy to this horizontal surface so you can see the total kinetic energy of our system will be half mx dot square and total potential energy is half kx square now we can find the lagrangian of the system and as we know lagrangian l is t minus b so let us substitute the value of t and b from here so t is half mx dot square and b is half kx square so what will be l l is simply half mx dot square minus half kx square let us say this is equation number 1 now as i have told you in second step we find the conjugate momentum to to the generalized coordinate here generalized coordinate is, is x and its conjugate momentum is represented by the symbol px and as we know that uh, pk is equal to del l by del qk dot 
सो हियर पी एक्स विल बी इक्वल टू डेल एल बाय डेल एक्स डॉट नाउ लेट एस सब्सटीट्यूट द वैल्यू ऑफ एल फ्रॉम इक्वेशन वन दिस इज दिस मच हाफ एम एक्स डॉट स्क्वायर माइनस हाफ के एक्स स्क्वायर नाउ डिफ्रेंशिएट दिस विथ पार्शियली विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स डॉट सिंस द सेकेंड टर्म डज नॉट कॉन्टेन एक्स डॉट सो इट्स डेरीवेटिव विल बी जीरो एंड द डेरीवेटिव ऑफ फर्स्ट टर्म विल बी हाफ एम टाइम्स टू एक्स डॉट टू टू विल बी कैंसिल आउट एंड सो वॉट इज पी एक्स पी एक्स इज एम एक्स डॉट एंड फ्रॉम हियर वी कैन फाइंड दैट एक्स डॉट इज इक्वल टू पी एक्स ओवर एम सो वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द जनरलाइज मोमेंटम नाउ इन सेकेंड नेक्स्ट स्टेप एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू वी हैव वी विल हैव टू फाइंड द हेमिल्टोनियन ऑफ आवर सिस्टम फ्रॉम इट जनरल डेफिनेशन and what is its general definition its general definition is h equal to summation over k pk qk dot minus l here p degree of freedom is 1 so k will be simply 1 and uh, pk is replaced by px qk dot is x dot so h is equal to px times x dot minus l now we will substitute the value of l as i have found in first step the lagrangian of this system was half mx dot square minus half kx square so here we will substitute uh, this expression for l and we will find that h is equal to px times x dot minus half mx dot square plus half kx square now you can see this expression of hamiltonian is in terms of the generalized velocity x dot and the generalized coordinate x as i have told you you must express the hamiltonian of the system in terms of generalized momentum and generalized coordinate so we must replace this generalized velocity x dot in terms of generalized momentum px and what is the x dot this is px over m as i have seen above so uh, he, this equation will be px times px by m minus half m here is x dot square so this will be px over m square and uh, the difference of these two term is px square over 2m and the last term is half kx square so this is the hamiltonian of our system that is the one dimensional linear harmonic oscillator this is px square over 2m plus half kx square in this uh, e expression qk means x and pk means px so now we can write finally the hamilton's equations as you know uh, the hamilton's equations are qk dot equal to del h by del pk here qk is replaced by x so this is x dot is equal to del h by del px and px dot px dot is equal to minus del h by del x but we know uh, as uh, as i have calculated above h is equal to px square over 2m plus half kx square see here and now we will substitute this value of h in these results that is in hamilton's equations the differentiation is very simple you can see that we will get x dot equal to px over m and px dot will be minus kx these are uh, in fact the hamilton's equations for a one dimensional linear harmonic oscillator now uh, i would like to find the equation of motion which will actually describe the nature of motion of the spring mass system for this let us differentiate this result x dot equal to px by m with respect to t if you will differentiate this result with respect to t what you will get as here is x dot so again if we will differentiate with respect to t that, that will be x double dot and this uh, in rhs we will have px dot over m 
now we will substitute the value of px dot from equation 4 see here and uh, as px dot is minus kx so x double dot will be equal to minus k over m x and if you will take this term in LHS the equation will be finally x double dot plus k over m times x equal to 0. You can see this is just identical to equation of SHM. So we can conclude that this spring mass system performs a simple harmonic motion and so the cyclic frequency or the angular frequency of the oscillator uh, comparing that equation with the standard equation of SHM we can write omega square equal to k over m and that is omega is a square root of k over m and uh, so the period of oscillation of this system can be given as t equal to 2 pi over omega. So let us substitute the value of omega from here in this result. What you will get? You will get that t equal to 2 pi root over m over k. So uh, you have seen the solution is very simple. If we follow all the four steps, we can easily solve the problem. The other simple applications of uh, Hamilton's equations we will see in the next lecture.